Thursday, we are delighted to welcome back Jamie Court. He is the president of ConsumerWatchdog.org, uh, the Consumer Watchdog organization just around the corner from us here at our, Santa, our, our West L.A. studios here in Santa Monica. Mm -hmm. So we have the PACT Act. That's probably going to qualify for the November well, ballot. We submitted 840,000 signatures, and that should be good enough to get us on the November ballot because it's uh, more than ample given the validity rates, yeah. The other issue that Americans are thinking about right now is the Affordable uh, Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare. Um, but And we'll talk about that in a moment, but you also have another initiative that will be on the November ballot that is kind of, it has echoes of Prop 103. Well, it does more than echo. It, it extends this auto insurance and home insurance regulation that's been so successful in California, the health insurance rates because... So health insurance. Yeah, yeah. well, health insurance rates, if, if you've noticed, they've been going up uh, like a sure. runaway train. I mean, Anthem Blue Cross just had a 25% uh, rate hike. We keep seeing them, but in California, no one has the power to really look at these rate hikes and say they're not acceptable and then stop them. 25 other states have that give that right to an insurance commissioner and we don't have that in California so we're extending the really successful insurance regulation that's applied to auto and home to health insurance and we're requiring that health insurers do a lot of justification before they get to raise their rates and we're also going to actually uh, apply the same type of public participation provisions we've used with auto and home so that consumer groups like ours or any member of the public can stand up and say, no, that rate's not justified. You can hire an actuary, and if you prove the rate's not reasonable, then the insurance companies have to pay your actuaries. And, your, and so by doing this, we've kept auto insurance and home insurance rates really low mm -hmm. in California. We can do it for health insurance, too. Uh, and we have the California Nurses Association behind it, uh, along with, uh, you know, Senator Dianne Feinstein's in favor of it, um, mm -hmm. and she's fairly pro-business. So this is a really just kind of moderate measure that, that actually does a lot for consumers, but also does something for small businesses and businesses who pay for these these insurance rates. And increasingly, it's too big a share of their bottom line. It's, it's got to come down. And we think a lot of the rate hikes are very unjustified, that the insurers are sitting on money and reserves they shouldn't be sitting on. We know that they're doing a lot in terms of passing on political contributions, excessive uh, executive compensation. You cannot do that in the auto insurance market in California. If, you, if, if an insurance company fights us like they're going to fight our ballot measure, WellPoint mm -hmm. just gave $13 million. This is the parent of Anthem Blue Cross against the health insurance rate regulation measure. When they do that, now they can pass that on to you, the consumer. But if we pass this ballot measure, they won't be able to pass on their political lobbying costs, their candidate uh, uh, contributions. Mm -hmm. If they pay their CEO too much, and believe me, the, uh, most of them pay their CEOs too much, they can't pass on whatever that is an excessive insurance rate. So the health insurance regulation is just so critical for all of us, and of course we're going to be facing a huge opposition among the health insurance industry. Of course. But I think uh, if the public can just, just hear what this has done for auto insurance and home insurance and, and realize what it's really about consumers standing up for themselves, that we're going we're gonna to break through. If, have you done any projections on mm -hmm. how rates, how much they would drop if all of the um, things that really aren't that necessary were removed? Well, we know that uh, uh, we haven't done a projection overall, but we have looked at individual company rates, and so has the Department of Insurance. So many of the recent rate hikes, uh, which are double-digit rate hikes, are unreasonable, uh, and they have been for many years. Under the initiative, we're actually able to look back to 2012. And if the rates are excessive since 2012 for health insurance companies, the insurance commissioner, if he finds that, can order refunds going backwards. So we're talking about saving people probably, you know, hundreds to maybe uh, thousands of dollars on their uh, on their uh, health insurance over the last couple of years just to catch up to where we are today. Actual cash Actual in your pocket? Actual cash in our pocket, yeah. Because, you know, the average family is paying $12,000 a year mm -hmm. for health insurance. And mm -hmm. if those rates are 20% too high, you do the math, that's $2,400 a year. And the insurance companies? have been raising rates because they can. Because they can, and uh, they don't have to justify themselves to anyone. And th in other states where we have seen this type of rate justification review and regulation, we've seen a cap on rates. Massachusetts, uh, which had very high rates, uh, implemented this provision, and rates have been flat for the last two, three years. New York implemented the provision. The rates have been flat for two it, After we did this with auto insurance, it's very interesting. In 88, there was a mandatory auto insurance law. 
And then we passed Prop 103 to say, well, if auto insurance is going to be mandatory, it better be affordable. Well, the parallels are eerie, right? We now have a mandatory health insurance law, sure. but there's no requirement that health insurance be affordable. And that's what this uh, health insurance review and, and rate regulation measure is all about. It's about making sure that there's someone watching, that there's an independent voice as we're implementing Obamacare, as, as, as insurers are able in California to play with their numbers and jack up rates. Someone's watching and someone can say no if the rates are unreasonable. We want to talk about um, health care, but just before we move to that, I mean, California is often seen as the most progressive state in the country, and why is it that New York, et cetera, et cetera, mm -hmm. they already have these caps, these controls in place, and we don't? I've been fighting the health insurers and the insurers in the capital for 25 years, and I can tell you, these are the most powerful industry, industries in Sacramento, the medical and the insurance industry. These are the guys who spent hundreds of millions to get their way with candidates, with politicians and in the ballot measure process. So it's all about money and power. I mean, Senator Calderon, who was recently indicted yes. by the FBI, was the head of the insurance committee, and he mm -hmm. used his power often for the insurance industry as well as for the uh, medical scheme mm -hmm. that... Uh, he is alleged to have taken uh, multiple bribes in. So when we look at these corruptions, can Leland Yee, who just fell up yes. in Sa San Francisco, I'll tell you, the California Medical Association, the insurance industry, had no bigger friend in Sacramento than Leland Yee. So corruption is part of it, but there's just also just the legal cash register politics. So you can, we, we tried for 12 years to get health insurance rate regulation through the, the legislature with Dave Jones, our insurance commissioner, was in the mm -hmm. legislature mm -hmm. and others, and we could never move it past the Senate uh, to the Senate floor because the insurers always controlled a certain number of votes that kept us from doing it. Uh, Senator Calderon, who was recently indicted, was one of those votes. Senator Wright, who was recently indicted, was also another of those votes. They always had just enough to keep yeah. us from getting to the governor's desk. I think the governors would have had to sign it if we did it. Even Schwarzenegger probably would have had to sign it, but we could never move it out of the legislature. Proving once again the value and the importance of the initiative. Going out and collecting signatures. This is all about, I mean, this is our, 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 our affiliate consumer watchdog campaign has done this uh, as a lobbying effort because that's what you have to do with initiatives, but this is all about direct democracy. This is where the public actually has a chance to vote on something that's good for it. And the only real issue, because we've seen the polling, you know, on both these issues, more than two thirds of voters want this. It's a question of whether they'll be able to see through the smoke screen of confusing ads by the industries claiming uh, it isn't what they think it is. We only have about two minutes left for this segment. Affordable Health, uh, the Affordable Care Act. Uh, deadline is coming up. It's days away. Yeah, and, and, and I think that in, in many ways, look, it's insured a lot of people. It's put people into insurance policies that are there whether they get sick or not, but there's a lot of hiccups. And what I think is California has to do is look at Covered California, the exchange, which uh, has had tremendous problems for consumers, and we need to start fixing it. I think we have to accept where we are as a place that is better than where we were. Mm -hmm. The problem I see is Covered California, which has really become like an insurance agent for the insurance industry, the health insurers, mm -hmm. isn't willing to accept its problems. There's long waits. People were supposed to have gotten coverage that didn't get it, but the the big problem with the new policies is that if you're in covered California, not in the private market, very skinny networks of doctors and hospitals. And you better make sure your doctor and hospital is on that list mm -hmm. because people are finding out that their oncologists weren't on that list, doctors and hospitals that they've had on the old plans were on the list. And I think the health insurers have to be forced to open up bigger networks of doctors and hospitals because right now what rates they're charging are too high if they don't have enough doctors and hospitals in it. Mm -hmm. On that note, let's take one more break. We'll be right back.